Asante sana Governor Nairobi na viongozi wa Nairobi pia walionena machache. Kwa heshima mheshimiwa rais sasa naomba nimwalike Sister Jacqueline Mugo, Executive Director Federation of Kenya Employers anene machache. Karibu. Your Excellency William Ruto, President and Commander in Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya. Your Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors and High Commissioners present, Governor Johnstone Sakaja, the Governor of Nairobi, and all Governors present. The Cabinet Secretary for Labor, Honorable Florence Bore, Honorable Cabinet Secretaries present, Principal Secretaries present, Dr. Francis Atuoli, the Secretary General of COTU. Members of the manage board, Management Board of the Federation of Kenya Employers, led by our National Vice President, Mr. Masharia, senior government, government officials and various leaders from the labor, labor movement present. I greet you all this morning on this occasion of National Labor Day. Your Excellency, allow me to start by thanking you sincerely for gracing our day today and in workers' colors. Now, that means employers have to find a color <laughs> which you will wear on the day you will come to commune with us. As we gather to celebrate the invaluable contributions of workers and employers, we also reflect on a crucial theme that resonates deeply with our collective future, the theme chosen by KOTU. Kenyan workers stand for advanced information technology training to drive our digital economy. This theme underscores the pivotal role of skilled and empowered workers in harnessing the potential of advanced information technology to propel our nation's digital transformation and economic growth. As the saying goes, the future belongs to the prepared. The important issue is not what the future holds for us, but how prepared we are for that future. The World Economic Report, released on the 16th of April this year, indicates that slowdown in total factor productivity, increased misallocation of capital and labor between firms within sectors, demographic pressures, and a slowdown in private capital formation as the key challenges facing the world economy today. Depending on how you look at them, these challenges also present unique opportunities that we can tap into to take our country to the next level. Improving our productivity at macro and micro level is something we should focus on if we are to remain competitive as a country. I know this is not a topic that Francis likes, but we need to talk about it. It is time that we took significant steps towards increasing our productivity. Let me now talk a little about our demographics. The figures that we have indicate that nearly two in every three new entrants into the global workforce over the medium term will come from India and sub-Saharan Africa, our part of the world. The developed economies and China will struggle with the effect of an aging population. The global imbalance in labor supply also points to the importance of migrant workers for advanced economies and labor migration especially for India and Sub-Saharan Africa. So, Your Excellency, employers support your efforts in advocating for well-regulated labor migration. We need to improve both our skill systems and labor migration policies to ensure that our people who migrate to work can compete for high income and quality jobs. Another reality is that whereas the labor force participation rates are projected to decrease in advanced and high-income in middle economies, low-income countries such as ours are expected to experience a sharp rise, 2.1% growth in labor supply. This highlights the need for Africa to focus on job creation to translate this supply growth into employment. We need to focus on programs that spur growth of job-rich sectors such as manufacturing, agriculture, 
tourism and hospitality among others. We also need to support our enterprises to expand and create employment for our people. Your Excellency, for us to create a labor market environment that supports business growth and employment creation, three key actions are needed. And the first one is strengthening social dialogue and tripartism. Collaborative engagements between government, employers and workers' representatives is not just ideal, it is a practical necessity for fostering mutual understanding, resolving industrial disputes amicably and creating work environments that are conducive to productivity and workers' well-being. I want to appeal to the government and the doctors to give social dialogue a chance to resolve the ongoing strike by the doctors to alleviate the suffering of Kenyans. When all stakeholders come to the table with a willingness to listen, to learn, and to compromise when necessary, it paves the way for sustainable solutions that benefits everyone involved, and we get win-win solutions. So Your Excellency, we are looking to you to help us uh, resolve this national huge challenge. Social dialogue is effective when we create and support institutions of social dialogue, both at national and enterprise level. For example, we, we need strong labor sector bodies such as the National Labor Board, Wages Council, and enterprise level committees. Your Excellency, these last few days, I've had the Secretary General of COTU pushing for a general wage increase or saying he'll push for a general wage increase. And I understand where it's coming from because the workers are struggling with a reduction in their take-home pay. But the reality is that there is no legal framework that supports general wage increases in Kenya. This, in fact, would negate freedom of enterprise, the determination of wage review beyond the minimum wages that we often discuss, which are set by the state, is done through negotiation of, of collective bargaining agreements or at employment contract level. So I do implore us all as labor sector leaders and as a country to delink wage adjustments, including statutory minimum wages from the National Labor Day celebrations and to allow these institutions to do their work, to deliberate and to advise the government. As of today, it is unfortunate that no minimum wage council has met to deliberate and advise on the minimum wage adjustments as required by law. Therefore, any call to adjust minimum wages without following the laid down procedures and law undermines social dialogue and tripartism. I also want to put in a word for respecting the independence of trade unions and employers' organizations. These um, institutions play a crucial role in the labor sector and have done so since independence. Trade unions and employers' organizations are fundamental to to harmonious labor relations, and they support the upholding of the rights of both workers and employers and the promotion of fair labor practices. So I would appeal for support and um, recognition of the role that these bodies play. Lastly, Your Excellency, I want to appeal for support and protection of business. I want to highlight the critical importance of this because I believe that our businesses are the backbone of our economy alongside the workers who do the work and they are the pillar of our society. So supporting business means creating an enabling environment for enterprises that fosters innovation, entrepreneurship and investment. This includes providing access to capital, promoting market competitiveness, streamlining regulatory processes and offering incentives for growth and expansion. By supporting businesses, we create a ripple effect of economic opportunities that benefit workers and their families. Your Excellency, in my engagement with various members of the Federation of Kenya Employers, their request to the government is simple. They need a stable, predictable, and simple regulatory framework that will enable their businesses to cope and to grow. This regulatory framework should also support informal business businesses because we know we have a huge informal sector and these should become more productive, should have access to regional and international markets, improve on their skills and require, acquire modern technology and equipment in their production to
to boost the economy, which is also in line with the theme we are discussing today. As I conclude, Your Excellency, we want to celebrate the hard work and dedication of workers and employers across all sectors and the role played by your government in enabling us to play this role. We want to reaffirm our commitment to the development of a harmonious and efficient labor market and to nation building. I believe that together we can build a more inclusive, equitable, and prosperous future for us all. Thank you very much and happy Labor Day to you all.